Editing images is kind of a pain in the ass with these latent diffusion models. You get an image that's like 90% of what you want and you want to make like some small change to it. And you're like, if I could just make that some small change, I'd have something that I could post to Twitter and then maybe Elon Musk would notice me finally. But you can't. You've got the images there and you know that if you put it image to image and ask for like a small change, you're going to get a big change or no change. So we're screwed. There's no way out. There's no solution. Until now. Until now, boyo. There's a new paper. A new paper just dropped. It's called Prompt to Prompt Image Editing with Cross Attention Control. It's so significant of a paper that two minute papers took two minutes out of his day to make a video on it. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna focus on just enough technicals, just enough of a technical understanding of this new technique so that we're not fumbling around in the darkness. And then we're gonna start fumbling around in the darkness because I made a collab, it's based on an actual good collab. We're just gonna go through it and I'm gonna show you the kind of things you can do and then you can copy it and then you can make all those, you know, great pictures and then like you can get like the, the boobs just right. By the way, um, check Twitter. I'll wait, I'll wait. Just, just go to Twitter, hashtag Stable Diffusion. And then, I don't know, just take a few minutes, come back to me. G leave a comment, leave a comment about what you saw, what the main thing that you saw was. But let's just say that something that was always inevitably gonna happen has happened. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, that aside, uh, what is the paper about? What's the idea? What these guys were trying to solve is create a way for users to be able to edit images by just changing the prompt. So rather than having to apply Photoshop manually or maybe you know, in painting or something like that. All you have to do is take your initial prompt and you see what it is and you're like, oh, okay, I don't quite like this bit of it. And you can just change part of the prompt. So the ideal the authors were sort of aiming for was you generate hundreds of images of a little boy singing in the field and then you kind of try to find a good one. And you find one that's almost there and you realize at the very end, actually, it would look better if that little boy was a girl. And to achieve that, rather than having to do all this nonsense and bend over backwards, you just need to change boy to girl, regenerate, and you'll get your, your image. That's really what we'd like to be able to do. We would like to be able to tell machines what we want, and the machines do the thing. And they actually did something that was like pretty damn clever. So they found a way to work out which parts of the prompt corresponded to which pixels in the image generated from that prompt. Which, like, that's pretty crazy. Okay, so let's say we've just generated this image, a boy sitting in a field, that was the prompt we used, and we wanna change that to a girl sitting in a field. Using cross attention, Stable Diffusion already knows which pixels belong to that boy. So when you give it this new um, prompt, it's like, ah, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna try to make the image fit the new prompt, but I'm not allowed to really touch any of the field pixels. I can only touch the boy pixels. So it'll do that, and eventually you're gonna get, you're gonna get a girl, and the field will be like exactly the same. Okay, so without getting too technical, right, you can use this cross-attention to do three things. What we just described, i.e. changing one particular named entity in the scene to another entity. The second thing you can do is style transfer, basically keeping all the entities in the scene the same and just making it a different style. And the third thing you can do is increase or decrease the emphasis on a particular entity in the scene. If you try to do something that's not one of those three things, you're probably not gonna have a good time. And, you know, maybe you should try to use some other technique to get what you want. But if you wanna do something that is one of those three things, then cross attention seems to work really, really well and it's pretty easy to use as well. Um, there are some great results that they got in the paper. The thing that was sort of the coolest, I think, was they were able to change the kind of cake. <laughs> Sounds a bit stupid, but they started with one particular cake and they were able to change what type of cake it was. So like changing the type of thing uh, that you're looking at seems to be something it's really, really, really good at. Okay, great. Theory over, theory done. Now it's time to get practical. Okay, so we're in this collab now. This collab is an open source implementation of the paper that works with stable diffusion. So someone's written up some nice code to actually implement all the clever things that the cross attention guys did. And that code is in this collab for us to use. Easy peasy. So first step, we have to make sure that we have a GPU. And Tesla T4, it looks like we do. There are some other things that are also GPUs, but just make sure that you look at this output and confirm that what it's referring to looks like a GPU. Now we install a bunch of dependencies. That's all very standard Python stuff. And import those dependencies into Python once they've been installed. Okay, so the next thing we need is a Hugging Face token so that we can use that token to grab the stable diffusion model off of Hugging Face. So Hugging Face, log into Hugging Face, click on your thingo, settings, access tokens, and copy. Uh, run this cell and a little uh, thing will pop up, paste it in there, and just press enter and then that will complete. 
Okay, so now we pull the model down from Hugging Face and chuck it on our CoLab. This is going to take a little while to download because, again, the model's like pretty chunky. And when I say the model, by the way, I'm talking about Stable Diffusion 1.4. Because, again, cross attention is just something that works as another layer on top of Stable Diffusion or Imogen or Dali or any kind of um, latent diffusion model. Okay, nice. Download's completed. Now all we have to do is run this cell, which sets up the code logic. I'll just show you this for a second. It's this huge cell with all this code in it. The only thing you might want to know from this is to check out this here, because this is all the parameters that you can pass to the stable diffusion function. And some of these are going to be important. And maybe you have a specific use case and you're not sure if you can do that use case or not. You can just have a look at these parameters and see if any of these parameters seem like they cater to your use case. So this is a little bit important. But for now, uh, we're just going to hide it. And finally, we are ready to get started. So cross attention is all about prompts. You have your initial prompt, which you use to generate an image, and then you alter that image with a secondary prompt that differs slightly from the initial prompt. So here we start with a fantasy landscape with a pine tree in the foreground and a red sun setting in the distance trending on art station. And we run that cell, and this, this one here shows us what all the indices for the different tokens are. So we've got 23 tokens in this prompt, and now we can see which indices they sit on. This is going to be important because what you can do with cross-attention is increase the importance or, de or decrease the importance of certain tokens, and you have to use the index of the token to do that. Okay, so we have the prompt, that's great. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to generate an image from that prompt, that's number one, like a base image. And then after that, we're going to try to take the pine tree and make it not a pine tree. So we see that pine is the sixth indexed token. And we're just saying, get token number six and reduce its weight all the way down to basically nothing. So that hopefully what we'll get from that is just like a tree. No pine. Um, and similarly, we're going to try to make the painting a bit more realistic by reducing the weight on token two, which is fantasy. So that was one of the things that the paper does. You can take a single token and reduce or increase its importance. All you have to do is run this cell and it'll display the images one after the other. Now what's happening here is we're just doing normal stable diffusion. We're passing a prompt to the model and it's generating just like usual, it's generating the base image. And after that what we're doing is we're giving it the same prompt with different weightings and then cross attention will use that to alter the output. So here we go. This is the base, right? Uh, seems pretty reasonable. And then when we reduce the pine, token we get a tree that definitely is not a pine tree and then finally we get another landscape which it does look a lot less fantasy-esque than the other two so one two three they seem to have done their jobs um i'm most impressed with the tree one personally because trying to get that result with any kind of other image to image strategy would be really difficult so i actually yeah this is quite impressive okay but what else next we're going to try to make a winter version so we'll just take the original prompt and then we'll give it the modified prompt so the prompt plus in winter and then we'll run. And this should give us a modified image where it looks like the image is in winter. Okay, and one more important thing before we proceed. So the seed is really important here. You always have to set the seed because the whole way this works is that the initial image has a particular composition which stable diffusion arrives at. And by changing that composition slightly, we get a, different, a slightly different image. But if you reset the seed, then the kind of image stable diffusion will generate the second time will be miles off the original image. So you always have to set the seed when you're doing cross-attention stuff. The second thing is, a bit easier, make sure you add a space if you're adding more tokens onto the end of a prompt, because obviously the end of this prompt is art station. And if we don't add a space, it'll be art station winter, <laughs> which we don't want. Okay, cool. So this was the base, right? We've seen that already. And the winter one, not bad, right? Quite good, actually. It's got stuff on the tree, it's got stuff on the sky, the ground looks snowy. I remember I tried to get similar results, you know, changing an oak tree from summer to winter with another image to image technique. And I just had a hell of a time. I spent a very long time, didn't make any progress. This was so easy. This was this was done on the first attempt and it's like, it's like really impressive. So I was just really chuffed with that. Okay, now I know what you're thinking, right? You've seen examples in the papers and you've seen what I'm doing and you're like, I'm not seeing any humans here. Why isn't he showing me any humans? Because we, we care about humans, basically, and not really much else. So the fact that no one's showing me any humans is making me a bit sus, and probably there's something up here. And the sad truth of the matter is that diffusion models are just not very good at generating humans, uh, especially not human faces. So as a consequence of that, just so I wasn't here for 10 hours, I've kind of cheated a little bit. 
I'm gonna give you a human now. We're about to see some human results, but it did take me a while and I have jiggled around with the seed to get a good seed. Um, I, face generation, I just found that the regular stable diffusion model had difficulty even generating an image with a good face in it. And I didn't want to spend like four hours trying to do that. So I just found a good seed and we have a human, but he's facing away. Okay, so like just lower your expectations slightly, but still, still, I think some of it is pretty impressive. So we've got our next prompt, which is a young boy playing in a field on a hill overlooking Green Valley. I've got my um, cherry picked seed here. And if we print it out, we see it's, uh, you know, it's 16 or 15 different tokens. Oh, I, I ran them out of order. I have to run this one first and then this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate a, uh, a boy, which is just generating an image normally with stable diffusion. And then we're going to generate our cross attention image. So we take the first prompt and a second slightly modified prompt where we've just replaced boy with girl. And then we regenerate and we see, hopefully what we should get is an image where everything's the same. It's just that there's a girl instead of a boy. Again, something that's really hard to get, usually. Image to image struggles with this a lot. Okay, so we've got our boy overlooking this nice field, looks pretty photorealistic. Nice, 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 and hey. Um, I thought this was really good. Again, no face in it, so that's a bit sad, but you do see that it's changed her clothes, it's actually changed her like arms a little bit, it's changed her hair. So this is something that'd be really hard to do manually, or I think within painting. I think it's done a really good job, and obviously the um, the lines are kind of seamless. Now we're going to try three more things. We're going to replace the boy with a man. We're going to make the green valley a dry valley. And then we're also going to do style transfer, which is the third thing you can do with cross attention. And in my opinion, the style transfer is actually the best. Okay, we're done. So keep in mind here that the prompt is a young boy playing in a field. So when we replace boy with man, we get like a young man. And that's what we end up seeing here in this image. The sort of surprising thing is that it's also changed his skin tone, which like, that's not really expected, but it's certainly not outside of what we requested. Uh, and it also shows the ability for the model to do things like that. So if you want to play around with that a little bit, you can. Um, we're also, yeah, this is the dry one. As you can see, it's made a huge difference. Although interestingly, the valley looks about the same. It's just the, the grass around him that's gone dry, which is kind of interesting, actually, because it means that from the prompt, this green actually refers to this around the kid. I would have thought the green would have referred to this bit, but the pixels were apparently these pixels. I have a feeling with the cross attention, maybe the best thing won't even be what we can do with it in terms of art. Maybe it'll be the cool insights you can get into how these models think. Maybe that'll be the really cool thing about cross attention. Uh, the final one, which I think is the best, is this watercolor. And the reason that this is sick is because the compositional elements remain the same while the style is completely different. Because often when you try to do style transfer with these machine learning models, you end up with a completely different image altogether but this one has stayed really faithful to the original and it's also made it a really nice and different very different style okay final thing tonight we're gonna go over image to image with cross attention because of course there's probably some image you have sitting on your computer that you want to do some alterations to we get a new prompt photo of a young woman with red hair a closed mouth pale skin and open eyes and we're just gonna download this I uploaded this picture to my github repository so that it's easy to use um, and we can even have a look at it. It's this image, you know, this is th this one, this poor lady who's being flung all over the internet right now. Um, okay. And so we're just going to make a version of her with her eyes closed. Um, you give it the original prompt, which is the prompt that we've, we've got here, which is just a prompt that describes this image. We're going to give it the same prompt again, but change eyes open to eyes closed because we want to have her have her eyes closed. And we're going to set the image strength to 0.65. By default, it's 0.5. Higher means you're going to get closer to the image, the original one. Lower means the model will go crazy and do a lot of changes. And now we just run. Okay, so I think maybe the description was not super accurate, right? I, I, I maybe, maybe went overboard with the pale skin and the red hair, maybe like ginger hair or something would have been a bit truer to this image. But the thing I do like is that it has made her close her eyes. Bottom line, you can use cross attention to do things like close subjects' eyes or open subjects' eyes or, I don't know, make their noses bigger. That's the kind of stuff that you can do. And again, you can use image to image if you want to get a baseline and it'll stick pretty close to that baseline. Um, compositionally, you can see color of the shirt still the same, the background still the same, um, expressions quite similar, etc. etc. And that's all. I This was a slog. I just released a video like five hours ago and then suddenly um, 
I found out that Two Minute Papers had also released this, and I was like, oh, oh, I have to do this. So I just, that was probably not wise. Anyway, if you want any technical assistance, get in the Discord or leave a comment on YouTube and I'll see what I can do. And especially this, if you know of any like upcoming stuff, like maybe you are more in the know than I am and you know this next Stable Diffusion thing is coming out and it's gonna be really cool, please let me know. Like, cause I spend a lot of time scrolling various sites to try to find what the newest thing is. And I don't necessarily like doing that that much. <laughs> For instance, someone suggested that I look into this Maya thing which is apparently like a really expensive version of Blender that's like a lot better. And see if there's any stable diffusion stuff going on there and maybe do a demo. And that sounds really interesting. So if you know of anything that's sort of similar to that, like, oh, you should do stable diffusion here or here, or I'm a farmer and I need it on my tractor, like, just let me know. I'd also be really interested in seeing any cool results with cross attention, because this stuff is like piping hot and no one's really done anything with it at all so far. Okay, cool. You know, keep it real, keep it real, gang.